Well, welcome to Fact with Erich. My name's Reverend Brennan. It's great to have you for our online service this week. And this week, we're going to be looking at the calling of Jeremiah, one of the great Old Testament prophets, and God calling him and using him, despite the fact that Jeremiah felt too young, despite the fact that he didn't feel like he was able to speak, God used him. And I pray that it gives you encouragement too in your life that God can use you in the way that you serve him, in the way that you live your life. Well, let's pray as we start our service today that God would help us uh, to, to worship him and hear from him today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can come together as your people through this video and worship with those who have been in church today. God, would you move us by your Holy Spirit to love you more, follow you more, serve you in our lives, we pray. God, inspire us through your word, through these prayers, through these words of mine. Help us to dedicate this time for you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, as we start our service last week, we, had a, a, we were looking at a guy called Isaiah, and he was in the Old Testament as well, and uh, he thought he was not good enough for God. And the fact is, he wasn't. None of us are good enough for God, but, but... God made him good enough. God cleansed him and gave him a purpose so that Isaiah could say, I am good enough for God to use me because God has worked in my life through me. He has cleansed me and is using me. So as we start our uh, service, we're going to hark back to those words from Isaiah last week and look to God for forgiveness for the bad things we've done and healing, and hope for the people he is making us to be. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our guilt to be removed and our sin wiped out. So we meet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with repentance in our hearts. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name. Lord Almighty, in our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sin and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To bring him praise Come all and tune your hearts to sing To the morning star of grace From the shifting shadows of the earth We will lift our eyes to him Where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children But 
would follow us through all our days with the certain hope of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Bible reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 1 and starting at verse 4. Let's be encouraged by these words and apply them to our own lives in what we read today. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and the kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I see a branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again, what do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting towards us from the north. The Lord said to me, From the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against her surrounding walls and against the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods and in worshipping what their hands have made. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, 
and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let's spend a few moments uh, reflecting on that passage in Jeremiah 1. Last week, as I say, we had Isaiah. God can't use me. I'm not good enough, thinks Isaiah. Wrong. Wrong. God could use Isaiah because he's going to cleanse Isaiah and give him a purpose. If you think you aren't good enough for God, well, who is? But that's the point. God comes. He comes to cleanse us. He came in the person of Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins that we might be cleansed for a reason, for a purpose. Now we get to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is saying, God can't use me. I'm too young. I'm too scared. I'm not gifted. Fear stops people becoming who God made them to be. When was the last time, I wonder, that you did something that was totally outside of your comfort zone? When was the last time you genuinely worried that you were not up for the job? When was the last time that you did something that scared you? I think as adults we often get into a comfort zone in life. We work out as a young adult, generally, uh, what we can do, what we're good at, working it out roughly, at least. And we kind of stick with it. That's what I work out what I, I do. Young people are much more used to doing new things, perhaps that they are scared to do. I mean, do you remember your first interview for a job? I mean, how scared were you in that interview? Do you remember your first day at uni or your first day at work? How did you feel in that moment? When we have those moments, when we feel outside of our comfort zone, it leads us to do, I think, one of three things. When we feel outside of our comfort zone, we might try and run from it, to shut down from it. We might kind of try to overcome that scary moment by, by being self-reliant. We might look to overcome that scary moment by being God-reliant. I wonder what your tendency is. Maybe your tendency is to run from what you're not comfortable with. You might run from responsibility. You might never go to the job interview because you're so scared. You might never make that presentation that you wanted to make. You might never ask that girl out. When we're faced with that out of control, scary feeling, out of that comfort moment, we can be tempted to run from it. When it comes to our responsibility to serve God in the ways that he has for us, we can be tempted to Run from it. Jeremiah tries to. He tries to run. I am too young and not gifted, he says in verse 6. Let me read it. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. How often do you make excuses? Not so much for things you can't do, but for the things that you think you can't do. You never really find out whether you can do it or not. You think you can't do it, you make excuses, and you never do it. But in fact, sometimes we never realise what we can do or not because we never try, because trying is scary. It's scary to try something new. We often get used to our little cocoons that we live in life. But God wants us to step out in faith, to follow him, and sometimes that can be new, maybe even unsettling in some ways that he is calling each and one of us to. Do you, are you tempted just to run in those sort of uncomfortable, scary moments? Or maybe you look to overcome fear by becoming more self-reliant, 
when you're forced into uncomfortable situations. You know, you pluck up that courage to try something new out of your comfort zone and think, wow, that wasn't so bad. I stepped up, I did it myself, I feel great. And it leads us to depend on ourselves and our own abilities even more. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the danger is we think we are self-made or self-actualized, that everything depends on me, everything depends on us. And what it does is it stokes that sense of self-confidence, which the danger is that that the foundation of that self-confidence is some sort of self-pride at its heart. I'm good at this simply because I'm so great. I have made myself into who I am. I'm not scared anymore because I have overcome because I'm just that good. Jeremiah reminds us that it is God who gives gifts. We are not self-made. We are God-made. We are not self-reliant, but God-reliant. Verse 9, Then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I have appointed you over nations and kingdoms. God gifted Jeremiah with, with words in Jeremiah's mouth. God appointed Jeremiah over the nations. It wasn't Jeremiah that did that. It was God. And I think we run the danger of sometimes thinking that God has given for us or done for us that it's actually our own doing. What God has given is actually what we have done ourselves. There's a danger in which we get muddled up on that. Just because you have certain gifts or certain job does not mean that you are better than anyone else. It doesn't make you better than others because it's not so much your achievement, but God's gift in you that you are perhaps outliving in a really great way, which is fantastic. You can't boast about it in that way that you achieved it on your own. God has given you gifts. I want you to do amazing things. But in doing so, realize that God gives you those abilities and the situations in order to do them. They are gifts, they are presents, they are gifts he gives us as the people he's made us. I remember when I was at school, there was a, there was a boy at school uh, and he had the most amazing bike. You know, cycling bike, not like a motorbike. We were like 12. It had the most amazing bike. It had full suspension. We were all very envious of this bike. And he could really show off about this, this bike. It's great. I have this bike. I'm so great because I have this bike. But, the end, but at the end of the day, the only reason he had the bike was because his parents gave him the bike. He did nothing to earn the bike or anything. It was given to him as a present. His parents had bought it for him. It was nothing to do with how great he was, or even how great he was at, at cycling or, or biking. He wasn't the best. <laughs> he had the best bike. He wasn't the best cycler. It was a gift to him, not based on his achievements himself. And when, when we find with God, our gifts are his gift to us. Our achievements are out of the good things and gifts he's given us, as the people he has made us to be. When we find something that we need to do that's scary, we're often told, well, step up, overcome. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. But that self-reliance only goes so far and neglects the root reason you can do anything anyway. God's gift in you. Maybe fear helps you to become more God-reliant. Not so much that you just run away, scared. Not so much that you become, you know, self-reliant, but it actually makes you become more God-reliant. When you're out of your comfort zone, you turn to God more. You pray more, you read the Bible more, perhaps, when you're out of your comfort zone. If you are scared, Turn to God. We can depend on him, we can rely 
on him. Verse 7, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send to you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. God promises that he is with Jeremiah. And he promises his presence with us as God's people now also by his Holy Spirit. Surely I'm with you to the very end of the age, Jesus says. God is with us. God says, don't be afraid. Not because Jeremiah is so amazing and great that he has the ability to do it himself. No, but because God has come to gift him and give him the ability to speak and will rescue him from his worry of those who he speaks to. I wonder, when was the last time you did something scary for Jesus? When was the last time you did something scary for Jesus? I remember the first uh, time I ever uh, gave a sermon uh, and literally my legs shook. <laughs> I mean, uncontrollably shook. And I went up into the pulpit, which was the most rickety pulpit that I've ever been in, <laughs> with this wooden rickety pulpit. Every time my legs shook, it like reverberated around the, <laughs> around the pulpit. When, when, what was I scared of when I went into that pulpit, do you think? When I went there for the first time, what was scary about that moment? I wasn't scared of walking upstairs. I can do that. I wasn't even so much that I'm scared of talking. I talk all the time. I could do both those things. I was scared of what people would think. I was scared of people. Jeremiah was scared of people in verse 8. And he had a legitimate reason to be scared too, which I did not have by the way, when I preached my first sermon. No reason to be scared at all. They were lovely, lovely people. Jeremiah, not so much. I'm about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares Lord. Ooh. Their kings will come, set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against the, her surrounding walls and against the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me and burning incense to other gods and in worshipping what their hands have made. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. God's people, Judah, will be attacked by the people in the north they will lose battles and they will lose the war. Eventually, Jeremiah will see the destruction of Jerusalem and God's people carried off into exile. Pretty good reasons for being scared. Not only of those northern people, but of the people of, of Judah as well, who are just not going God's way at all. They're worshipping other gods. They're forgetting God. Pretty scary. He had a good reason to be scared. But God is saying, don't be scared of them. Don't be scared of people. Verse 17, get yourself ready, stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. I think God's saying, don't be terrified by people, or I will leave you to be terrified. Instead, take heart and take confidence in God. He's given you the gifts. He is with you. He will take you through. Verse 19, they will fight against you but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Don't be terrified of people. Take heart and confidence in God. He is with you and will rescue you, he says to Jeremiah. If you are terrified by people, to the extent that you don't do what God says to you in your life, then you'll be just left in terror because you will capitulate in terror to those around you rather than following God. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Don't underestimate how difficult and scary Jeremiah's task was. He was to preach to people who would not listen, or like what they heard. It was a message of hope and rescue from God Ultimately, 
It was a message of warning of destruction. But it was a message they would ultimately reject. God does not call us to a comfortable life. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Some of the greatest people in history have had the most, some of the most difficult lives. Some of the people who changed the world for good have had the most challenging and difficult of times doing so. When was the last time you did something scary for Jesus? I bet that when you did something scary for Jesus, you were worried about people, what they would think, what they would say. But you don't need to be afraid, and Jeremiah doesn't need to be afraid. Jeremiah didn't need to be afraid because God will give him the words and give him the gifts. God will be with him. And I actually think that, uh, that, that truth that we can apply to ourselves through Jesus, God is always with you. God gives you everything you need to follow him and to serve him. He's given you individual gifts to serve him in specific ways. We're all different. That's a wonderful thing about church. We're all different, serving him in different ways. I actually think it's a good thing that God takes us out of our comfort zone. I think it can help us to become more God-dependent rather than self-dependent. I think it can help us to pray more. I bet you, when you've been scared, I bet you pray far more. It can help us to rely on God's gifts more and help us to look to God's presence more. And I want to challenge you. I want, you to, to, I want to challenge you to do something scary for Jesus. I was going to say this week, but it looks like we're going into lockdown. So I don't know what we're going to have, if we're going to be able to do anything this week for the next few weeks. Maybe you could ring someone out of the blue and just see if they're okay. Maybe encourage them uh, with, with your faith in that way. See how they're coping. We're going to need more people to do that over the next few weeks, so please stand by. We need uh, extra, extra help uh, to, to help those who will be in need through this next lockdown. Perhaps we could think longer term about doing something scary for Jesus, taking us out of our comfort zone, using God's gifts in the ways that we can. Maybe you could think about how you might serve the Lord in a new way. We've had a number of people sign up recently to help with our, our Forest Sunday School, and that's been fantastic. For most, that's been a new thing. <laughs> Uh, and probably outside their comfort zone, I don't know, but I, it's been great. God is blessing us through that. I would love someone who was gifted and had a heart for youth to work with uh, them, to get in touch with me. With Festival Church, we've managed to engage children in a, in a new, amazing way, but uh, we'd love to do more for our teenagers. We are doing our online Zoom meetings with them every week, which is fantastic, but... You know, as we come out of lockdown, it'd be, it'd be wonderful to have opportunity to maybe have a group as part of Festival Church. Do you have the, the vision and skills for that? Maybe you have a vision for a new ministry that I've not even thought about. Maybe women's ministry, men's ministry. Maybe you could help us develop new ways in which we as a church could care for creation better. We need help to do that. Maybe you have gifts in social media, videos, and can help us make that a key ministry in our church. Maybe you have a pastoral heart and want to help people who are struggling or bereaved. Maybe you can give your money in new ways, which might seem daunting and scary, but I want to challenge you. When was the last time you did something scary for Jesus? What could you do these next weeks these next months, this next year for Jesus that takes you out of that comfort zone? How might that help you to pray more and depend on God more? To look to God's gifts more? To know and hold on to God's presence with you more? He will rescue. He's already done it in Jesus. He will rescue. Serving in a new way, reaching out to a new person, using your gifts or possessions or money in a new way, all for Jesus. Let Jeremiah inspire you. 
This young man thought he was too young and couldn't speak. But God was with him. God gifted him. God called him to do an amazing ministry. It was a hard ministry. It was a hard ministry. But it was a good ministry. What is God calling us to? What is God calling you to? Don't just think about things that are in your comfort zone. Maybe we could help each other through this and help each other discern uh, gifts through this. If you want to chat about that with me or anyone else, get in touch. We want to be inspiring one another about the possibilities of what we could do as people in God's church here at Fountain Erich. Let's pray that God would uh, help us to do that. Father God, we look to you as our creator God and we know that you've made us for a reason. You make everything for a reason and you've given us uh, a purpose as each individual. And God, we look to you for, for your gifts in us to materialize and, and, and show itself. We pray to you that we might depend on you in the things that we do. Not self-dependent, but God-dependent. God, may we cling to you more. And God, inspire us. Maybe there's something right now that each one of us could think of that is outside of our comfort zone, that we can serve in a new way for Jesus. God, may this lockdown that we're about to go into Maybe be a time of reflection on that, so that coming out, our church might grow together in strength to be the people that you have called us and made us to be. Let your word, your scriptures inspire our hearts and lives, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us today uh, for our service here at Fountain Heritage. Next week, uh, it's almost certain to be that our main online service will be our main service. Uh, we possibly won't even be meeting in church. We're not even sure right now. But uh, look out for that. It will be Remembrance Day. It will be a really important one in the, the, the church life. Um, it will probably be at 10.50 online. Um, but check out our newsletter for that. If you don't get our newsletter and you're watching, uh, get in touch with me through the website. We'll get you on the newsletter and you can keep up to date uh, with, what, with what's going on. But let's pray as we finish our service this morning. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, a strength to our lives. Take us, use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the teaching of Jesus. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Go now to do God's will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.